Listen. I really mean it. Just listen. I'm going to stop speaking for a few seconds. See what you can hear. I know this is when someone's mobile phone goes off, isn't it? So just forget that. See what you can hear. The sounds here in the chapel, in the city around us possibly, maybe in the sky above, and perhaps even the sounds of your body, your mind, your heart. Just listen to all the random noise. This is how we started the week of guided prayer, a week ago on Sunday. We sat in the conference room together and Sister Lynn led us in a listening exercise, much like this, but much longer, and it set the tone for the whole week. And after just acclimatising, relaxing and listening, she read a short passage from the scriptures three times with some silence in between. And an outsider looking in the window might have thought, well, why read this three times? Didn't you hear it the first time? And of course, no, we didn't. The first time we kind of half heard half of it. The second time, maybe, we were listening a bit more. And the third time, we were hearing and listening and understanding a little bit and catching something and hearing not just the sounds or the words but a voice a voice of someone of the Lord speaking through the scriptures listening to the word of God what does this mean for us it was a wonderful week 44 of you were signed up as participants each of you committed to half an hour of prayer each day and a one-to-one -one meeting with your spiritual guide each day. Some of you relatively easily lunchtime afternoon. One or two of you met at seven in the morning or eleven in the evening. The point was to listen and to make space for listening. And the goal of the week in that listening was to open up the word of God and to hear the voice of Christ himself and to discover this is the beauty of the week that he is speaking to us personally in very real ways sometimes quietly sometimes and I know some of you have experienced this this week very loudly we just have to listen and to recognize his voice and this is exactly the journey of listening that St. Peter is on in the Gospel reading today. Just notice that it is a journey for Peter. At the beginning of the Gospel, Peter is absolutely not listening. Yeah? Everyone else is listening. It says, all the crowds were crowding round Jesus, listening to the Word of God. What's Peter doing? He's mending his nets. He's not interested. He's obsessed with his work and the failure of last night's catch. Then Jesus gets into Peter's boat and asks him to put out from the shore a little. So Peter's forced to pay attention, but he's still not really listening. He's there. He's there. But then Jesus looks at Peter and speaks to him personally and says those beautiful lines put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch this is a, a challenge Jesus is asking Peter to take a risk to go into the deep and dangerous waters to the place of his failure but it's also an invitation to trust it's a promise. Trust my words. Trust what I'm asking you to do. 
And that's how Peter hears it, and that's why he responds with those equally beautiful words. Master, we have worked hard all night long and caught nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. At your word I will let down the nets. And when they did this, they caught so many fish that their nets were breaking. Is that enough listening for Peter? Well, just go a bit further. It's when he sees the fish and he understands the sheer goodness of Jesus, his trustworthiness and his love for him personally, that's when Peter's heart breaks open and he falls to his knees and says, Leave me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Jesus' love has helped Peter to listen to his own heart, to see how ashamed he is of his past and his weakness, but how, in the light of Jesus' love, he's not afraid of that, and he could admit it, maybe for the first time. And only then, only then, the real real deep deep listening of Peter hearing the call of Jesus to follow him as a disciple and to become a fisher of men to discover his vocation as a Christian so the the ignoring and the half listening and the following and the brokenness all of that allows Peter to hear the deepest message which Jesus has which is I love you Come and follow me and see what work we have to do together. All of this a journey of listening. So what does it mean for you and for me? Um, well, many of us have had a little taste of it this week. We've heard it in the scriptures. And just for you to think this Sunday, how can I listen to the voice of Christ more in my life? How can I put out into the deep how can I admit and own and not be afraid of my weaknesses and sins because I know about the love of Jesus? And ultimately, how can I hear his call to me and what, I wonder, is my vocation? We can have lots of external aids, external helps to listening. I just thought, here I am at the Ambo, they're symbolised liturgically by what happens at the Mass. Yes, We come to Mass partly because we want to, to listen to the Word of God speaking to us. We want to listen and hear and be transformed. And the Church, in its liturgy, she gives us these beautiful symbols and aids. This is not a lectern. Yeah? It's not a lectern, a stand, it's an Ambo. It's part of the liturgical furniture. We have the altar, we have the presidential chair, we have the crucifix, the tabernacle, we have the ambo. And you see the ambo is vested like the priest and the tabernacle. Yeah, It's not just to make the church look pretty, it's to show us that this is the place of God's word and we want to honour God's word and attend to it. Just like Jesus jumped into Peter's boat, Jesus is jumping into our boat now. He's present here in his holy word at the Ambo, and we honour him with candles when the gospel is read. We stand to hear the gospel. I kiss the gospel. We mark our foreheads and our lips and our heart with the sign of the cross. It's all about helping us to listen to God's word. It's about doing something external, and that's important. And you can do this at home in different ways. You can make space. You can make time. You can take your Bible and put it in a, in a place of honour. We can do external things to help us to listen. These are important. But the external aids only go so far. We need, like St. Peter, an interior conversion, basically a desire to listen. Honestly, really. Do we really want to hear the Lord speaking to us? We often say, oh, he never speaks to me. But do we really want to? And if we do, 
we will hear him because we will want to and we will be listening more and the external things that we need to do will become more interior and more internal yes we need some silence we need to switch the phone off the computer the TV we need space in the diary all these external things and actually if you're plugged in constantly of course you're never going to hear anything we need to get things straight we need some space but it's the interior pondering that really matters it's it's the stopping with our hearts it's the habit of listening it's the sacrifice of letting go of some of the busyness and the distractions so we're not just switching off the phone or the computer we're switching off the buzzing noise in our mind and the the attachments in our heart so that just for a few minutes doesn't have to be half an hour just for a few minutes we can put them on the side and say speak Lord your servant is listening and even when the distractions come rushing back and the noise, we can just say, hang on, hang on, just a few seconds of listening. Often we're not listening because we're too busy, that's true. But sometimes, again honestly, we're not listening because we're afraid of the silence. We're afraid of the vulnerability that if we do stand before the Lord with open hearts, what will he say to us? To open ourselves like Peter, to face the Lord, to admit that we're not always in control, which creates a beautiful excitement and joy because the adventure of actually knowing the Lord and walking with him is beginning. Religion isn't just something my parents did or the saints, it's real. But we do become vulnerable and we do have to give up some of that control. So practically, get a Bible if you haven't got one. I think they said this at the beginning of the week of guided prayer. You can't pray with the scriptures if you haven't got any scriptures. Make a little bit of time for silence. This is Lent coming up, isn't it? How and where and when, it doesn't matter. But a little bit of time for silence and listening. Speak about prayer. Come and speak to one of the chaplains if you want to. This isn't a, a privilege for the elite to talk to our pastors and our chaplains about faith, about prayer, to be encouraged and advised and accompanied. I'll leave you with one final story. I went to a conference about two years ago, two days of, of Christian conference, and one of the keynote speakers, um, he stood up, it was the Royal Albert Hall, I don't know, two or three thousand people there. He stood up in front of these thousands of people with, with me on the back row there. And he just stood there. He just stood there in silence. I won't imitate the silence, because we've had some silence already. He just stood there. And then he said, I had lots of things to say, but I'm not going to say them, because I, I feel I need to listen to the Holy Spirit what the Spirit is saying to me to say to you. And for a couple of minutes I enjoyed the silence, yeah? And it went on. He stood there, I'm not exaggerating, for about ten minutes of silence. Yeah? And first, uh, three, the third minute, I just got annoyed. I thought, look, this is a nice gimmick, yes? You've got this in your notes, play a little gimmick of silence, and, but I'm getting bored now. And then after six minutes I got angry. Yeah? I thought, I've paid a lot of money to be here today, and you're just standing there looking up into the sky. Then, after an eternity, he spoke. Right? Won't say what he said. He said something so powerful, so true, and so directly related to my spiritual situation that day, that I felt like I'd been hit by lightning, and I just wanted to weep and lie on the floor. I had absolutely no doubts that the Holy Spirit had spoken to him and had spoken to me through him. He'd listened for ten minutes and then he'd spoken for just a few seconds it felt like 
And those few seconds were more precious than a thousand hours of noise. Now perhaps I should do this when I preach on Sundays. Yeah? Listen for ten minutes and then speak for two. And some of you might congratulate me on that. <laughs> it might be a lot better. Tell me what you think over coffee. Whatever your answer, I definitely need to listen more. And so do we all. <laughs>